the Bible says here, but now, O Lord, thou art our Father. You are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hand. God was speaking that to the nation of Israel. And he was telling the nation of Israel, Israel, I'm going to be your king and I'm going to shape you. I'm going to protect you. I will guide you. But you must follow my lead. You must follow the instructions. You must submit to God. You must worship God only. You must confess Him as Messiah. You must receive His Son as Messiah. And if you don't do that, it will not be good with you. Well, look what it says here in verse 8. But now, this is the bottom line. I'm your father, I'm your potter, you are the clay. My job is to shape you, to mold you. Your job is to receive it. If not, if you look in the next chapters in Isaiah 65 and on, God says, if you do not do this, these are the things that will happen to you. And he names them one by one by one what will happen to the nation of Israel. See, the one thing about God is God is honest with us. If you're not honest with God and if you do not obey God fully, he's going to tell you what's going to happen. And it's going to happen the way he says it. And if you, if you don't believe that, I want to introduce you to someone named Jonah. How many of you know of Jonah? Jonah was a piece of work. Jonah was all talk and no show. Jonah was chosen to be a prophet of God to go to this big city of Nineveh. This was a worldly pagan city. And Jonah was supposed to go preach the gospel and so people could hear the gospel and be saved. You know, God was going to call some people out of that city. Jonah said, no, I don't want to do that. I'd rather go fishing. I'd rather go traveling. No, I don't want to do that. Now, I'm old school. When I told my parents no, that did not happen too often. <laughs> you understand? Back then, spankings were good. Back then, taking away privileges was not shattering to the child's development. Back then, if dad says go, you go. Amen? Amen. If mom says come here, you don't go over there, you come here. Okay? If dad says, you're not going to that party, you're not going to that party. And if he says, you're going to work, and I'm going to get 30% of your check because I'm going to save for you, guess what? Out of that $30, maybe $13 is gone. It was not a debate. We did it. Nowadays, children have rights more than the parents. And they could sue their parents, and they could divorce their parents. Because they have rights. The next time your child says you have rights, and when they come to you at the table and pound their fists at the table and say, Mom, Dad, I have rights, don't throw the pen at them. Don't lose your temper. Here's what you do. You tell them, you know what? You're right, son. You do have rights. You're exactly right. And he'll smile or she'll smile. And I says, let me show you your rights. You ready? So you go to them. And you tell them, lift up your arm. You got a right arm. <laughs> Look at that hand. You got a right hand. Look at that ear. You got a right ear. Are you getting it? Look at your foot. You got a right foot. You do have rights, son. And those are the only rights you're going to have in this house. Amen. Until you get out on your own, pay your bills, feed yourself, 
and be responsible for yourself in this house you don't have any rights mm -hmm. Jonah made the mistake of saying God I don't need you I don't want to do this and I turn my back on you because I'm going fishing God says do you want to go fishing okay you go fishing son God created a big fish a huge fish a Shamu spotted Jonah when Jonah was by the sea and swallowed him up and for three days and three nights Jonah was in the belly of that great fish he didn't move a muscle he was scared he was cold he was hungry and he was trapped in the belly of a big fish because God says you want to go fishing you're gonna go fishing all right you're gonna be the bait and he was in the belly of that fish for three days and three nights no cable TV, no Wi-Fi, no computer. The man was encapsulated. And God spoke to him. He says, Jonah, let me remind you of something. You're the clay, and I'm the potter. Amen? You're the servant, and I'm your God. You're going to go to Nineveh, and you're going to speak the words I will speak unto you to them. And that is what you're going to do. I'm going to command this fish in the morning to spit you out and you're going to be on your way to Nineveh and you're going to do what I've told you to do. Amen? And he did it. Now whose will was greater that day? Whose will had the final say? Whose will prevailed? Who did what? Who had the last word? Who was in charge? God. Amen? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. Before my dad passed away, I told him two words. I told him thank you. All those times he gave me advice and gave me counsel, all the times he said, listen to me, trust me. I told him thank you because he knew what was best for me. I never forgot that. He was a great man. Amen. I wish I would have listened to him more. Amen. It dawned on me what he was saying. It dawned on me his plans. It dawned on me his advice. We need to do that with God. Amen. Thank you, God, for protecting me. Thank you, God, for not allowing me to make a mistake. Thank you, God, for guiding me. Thank you, God, for giving me a second chance. Thank you, God, for watching over me. Thank you, God, for having patience with me. Thank, Just thank God. Thank you, God, because I didn't know what was ahead of me, but you see everything and you protected me. Thank you, God. If you're out there this evening and your life's a mess and you tried everything in your power and everything in your mind to try to make it right and it gets worse, here's why. Because we're imperfect, we're not holy, and we fail. If you wonder why things don't go your way, because it's your way and it will not go your way. John 14, 6 says what? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to know truth, you have to know Jesus. If you want to find the right way, it's in Jesus. If you want eternal life, it's in Jesus. That's what he says. I'm just telling you what he said. And I don't dispute what he says. If you're tired of your life, make Jesus your life. If you're tired of the direction, the way you're going, make Jesus your way. If you want to find truth for once in your life, find Jesus now. If you're tired of your sins ruining your life, if you're tired of the addictions, if you're tired of all the pitfalls that sin has brought to you, now is the time to say, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me for my sins, and take charge of my life. Be my potter, mold me, shape me in what you want me to be, amen? 
mold me and shape me to what you want me to be as your servant. I want to be your servant by your will, not by my by your will. Take me places where you want me to go. Give me missions what you want me to complete. Show me people that I need to be around with. That is what you call being a servant in Jesus' name. So as we bow our heads, if you're out there and you're ready for Jesus to come and take over your life because it's a mess and shambles, here's the good news. Jesus can fix anything. Amen? Amen. He can fix your life right now. He can make your life complete. He can make it whole. He can heal any disease. He can cast out any demon. He can make it right, right now. But you must submit to Him. You must give your life totally to Him. And you must go at the feet of Jesus and ask for forgiveness and repent of your sin. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these people here. For those that are saved, bless them. Watch over them and protect them, Lord. Continue to lead them. Continue to guide and direct their lives. And whatever storms come our way, that you may still the storms with your command, and that whatever comes our way, that we'll be ready for, Lord. And Heavenly Father, I pray for those people out there that right now that need you. I pray for those people that have no direction, that need direction, that that they, that need healing, that need forgiveness, that need a new start, they need to be born again. Pray for those people, mighty Jesus, name to watch over. Heavenly Father, we also pray that this message will get out that people know who you really are. You are God. You answer to no one. You do everything according to your goodwill and pleasure. Amen. You do the choosing. You do You do the calling. You do the predestinating. You do everything because you are God. And we have shown it by verse, by verse, by verse this evening that you are God. We also pray, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for those times, Lord, where you brought us out of danger. We thank you for the times you shielded us from danger. We thank you for getting us through the storms, Lord. We thank you for helping us to stay on track with you. We just thank you so much in mighty Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We pray for the souls that are out there that you will bless them. All for your honor and glory, we pray. Amen.